We had Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara versus Ricky Starks and Action Andretti. And, uh, you know, the thing, I'll talk more about this tonight, but uh, obviously they're trying to get Ricky Starks and, and Action Andretti over. But as we learned with, uh, with WCW, it doesn't work to just keep beating a legend over and over and over again, okay? Like, the Chris Jericho in this situation needs to be somebody if you're going to get somebody over by beating him. So, like, in order to get Action Andretti over Ricky Starks, you can't just beat Jericho and beat the in every single match that they have. So they got a win here. They got a win via Heat. And Daniel Garcia hit Action Andretti with a baseball bat, and he got pinned. So so the idea here, I, I don't know where they're going to go, but this is obviously continuing. And uh, and they got heat back on the Jericho Appreciation Society with a win over Action Andretti. They gave him tons during this match. They gave Ricky Starks tons in this match. But they beat him in the end, and uh, now we see where it goes. It better be going towards Starks and Jericho. Well, it's going to better I, I be mean, going. We've already seen Starks and Jericho, but we can doesn't see it matter. Again. We didn't see Ricky Starks get the victory over another big victory over Chris Jericho, and I think that's what's going to have to happen. Action Andretti assimilating to be part of the ROH roster. There's lots of things that you can do with him. You just got to keep him relevant. You know, he does not have to be out there in the mix constantly, you know, but to me, Ricky Starks and Chris Jericho is still the hottest thing that you have. I mean, it's arguably, you know, depending on how you look at MJF and Danielson, it's the hottest thing in the company that you got. So to me, you still better be moving in that direction. We had the incredible Jay Briscoe video package, which, again, if you have not seen, go see it now. Darby Allen, Buddy Matthews for the TNT title. They're telling the story that Darby's just being beaten down week after week, and he has he's doing an insane schedule. It's taking its toll. They had footage from him in Japan. He's got his leg all taped up. But he still managed to beat Buddy Matthews. And then afterwards, during an interview, Samoa Joe appeared on the big screen and next week, it's no holds barred. Samoa Joe's coming to take his belt back from Darby Allen. We had an Adam, for the best. Adam Cole video package. He's uh, he's back, but he's not back in the ring yet. But it appears he'll be back at the uh, Revolution pay-per-view. And he's training hard. Total babyface promo here by Adam Cole. We had uh, Hook Boy against Ethan Page and Matt Hardy. And uh, Matt and Ethan are not getting along. But Matt does does uh, go for the twist of fate at the end, and Ethan goes, tag me! So Matt tags the guy. Guy goes for the twist of fate, and uh, it gets countered. He gets put in the snare trap. He's trying to get the tag, and Matt's like... Then Matt gets yanked off the apron. Ethan Page taps out. Big win for Hook Boy. Family therapy was not a wacky, goofy segment. It was essentially an interview segment, and they, they hired some uh, uh, OVW wrestler to play the therapist, who actually never said a word. And it's just, you know, the acclaimed and the guns and daddy ass arguing back and forth to set up what is going to be a tag title match with the guns and the acclaimed. This daddy ass going to switch his allegiance. Oh, no. I don't know. But, I mean, that's what I was wondering when this thing was over. Hangman does a promo. Next week, Dayton, Ohio. It is John Moxley versus Hangman Page 3. Not at the pay-per-view. They're doing it next week on television. And before that, it'll be uh, Hangman versus Wheeler Yuta on the show on Friday. Rampage. You think it's a shamaz? You think it's a setup for four? I mean, I, I can't imagine why you would do it on TV and not have another match on the pay-per-view, but I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Do they have another plan for these two guys? Do they have another? I mean, the pay per view is not that far off. So, Brian Danielson versus Brian Cage. Excellent big man, little man match. Brian Cage looked great in this match. Brian Danielson's awesome. Danielson finally flash pins him after Cage has been working over his arm and shoulder the entire match. And then afterwards, MJF comes down to the ring. They're going to pilmanize his arm, but who should make the save but Takeshita? MJF bails. Uh, Cage is laid out. They check on Danielson. They go backstage afterwards. Danielson's furious. He's telling the doctor, you are not stopping me from wrestling. I am doing this match. 
which, uh, you know, I like this storyline, but there are some holes here and there. One of which is the doctor is not allowed to tell Brian he can't wrestle. Actually, he should be able to. But Brian tells him, you're never stopping me from wrestling again. It doesn't matter if my arm's hanging off my uh, my body. And he vows to expose MJF in the Iron Man match. And uh, we'll see what happens. A hell of a promo by Brian Danielson. He was passionate. So we had Ruby Soho versus Tony Storm. So this was supposed to be Britt Baker versus Ruby versus Tony. But they announced that uh, Britt Baker was injured. And uh, if you saw the show, she came out at the end, and she did not have anything on her nose, okay? So the the injury, they, they were not... Uh, she pulled a hammy? Well, this thing is, is like, I, I cannot it's figure... It's bigger than rap. Well, no, I can't figure this out. So listen, do you realize that Britt Baker has wrestled with, like... I can't even tell you how many injuries, including broken bones, okay? Yes. And she had some sort of injury, which they didn't want her to wrestle, but, like, she should be fine, like, very soon. <laughs> it's like, wh what could possibly keep Britt Baker out of wrestling for a week? She wrestled with a broken wrist for, like, seven months or something like that. She must but, have that in does share finger thing going. But if you if you watched it, what happened was... She, her music hit. She came out, looked totally fine, didn't seem to have any injury whatsoever, did her DMD, Tony's distracted, and then Tony was pinned. Okay? So it seemed like, in storyline, she wasn't injured at all. She was just out there to screw Tony. But she, like the injury story, it's not a work. It has nothing to do with dark. It has it has nothing to do, like she, she has something that kept her off the show this week, but she may be ready, maybe even next week for all I know. I don't know. The whole thing's kind of weird, but uh, but she was uh, pulled from the match legitimately. But the way they shot the angle, they made it seem like she wasn't hurt at all. So anyway, whatever it was, uh, clearly she's a babyface. Jamie Hayter's a babyface. And they are doing the uh, homegrown talent versus the Outsiders feud. And we'll see what Ruby ends up doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. MJF did a promo. Excellent promo. He is a, a, a tortured soul who has a hole in his heart that only this title can fill. And clearly, he says, Brian Danielson, you have a hole as well. And then he plays the victim. Why would you want to take away from me the only thing that makes me happy? What a horrible person this Brian Danielson is. And so next week, he's got another challenge for Brian Danielson, Timothy Thatcher, who uh, is going to take him apart limb from limb. It's a big plane ticket. Uh, I if there's something you know, going back over for the... Uh, hey, I, the I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to... I don't want to get people's hopes up or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm certain that they said that Brian Danielson had to uh, go through February 8th, right? Yeah. So February 1 is next week. That's Thatcher. That leaves February 8th, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, February 11th, there's a Defy show. And Zack Sabre Jr. is on that show. Hmm. That's one, two, that's three days after that February 8th Dynamite. Are you... Are and Zack saying... Sabre Jr. would be a guy that I would want to tear out uh, Brian Danielson's shoulder. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. is a person who is going to wrestle Brian Danielson, but Brian Danielson was injured. I, I'm not, I absolutely 100%, I have no earthly idea. I am not reporting this. I am merely looking at that there is one more date, and he's in the country on the 11th. Brian Danielson, NJPW Strong Television Champion. But anyway, uh, Mark Briscoe, Jay Lethal was just, it was awesome. We talked about it earlier. Great match. Mark was unreal in this match. Jay was great. Mark won with the Jay Driller. I loved it. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets... Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any, anyway, she, her and her dad were in the, in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her... It's going to be quite a review a tonight. 
he was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we've got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> What a crummy show. Oh. Wow. What do you want me to do about it? What the? <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.